Nathan is a 15-year-old Jewish boy raised in a secular family. He died for 15 minutes during the Feast of Shuk Court 2015 which was accompanied by the fourth blood moon during that time. He was shown the future of Israel and end time visions his own parents did not raise him to be. Religious, disapprove of his vision and think he's crazy. So the accusation of mental suggestion may be ruled out. An Orthodox Jewish rabbi put his vision to the test of Hebrew scripture. Rabbi Eliezer Hegador tested 15-year-old Nathan and prove his death experience right. The holy day, holy days and seasons for rejoicing. When Rabbi Yehuda asked me, like every Feast of Tabernacles and Passover, to come here and give a lesson, I had prepared something about the Messiah. And I didn't know that, blessed be his name, that on the path one wants to follow, the Holy Blessed One would send me such help from heaven. The posters were printed and hung. Here the young man sitting on my right, his name is Nathan. He is not from Jerusalem. I will begin with an introduction and say he went through a very difficult experience and in a moment he will tell you what he saw and what messages he received. It's difficult for people to understand, what's hard to understand here is that he is only 15 years old and when the soul leaves the body it can receive huge amounts of information in just minutes. That means that what takes years for a person here in this world to learn, there in that world one can know and understand all within a matter of minutes, everything. So he has a lot to tell. It's hard for him to tell it. He also doesn't have the exact words to describe what he experienced because they aren't things of this world at all. Now I'm going to tell you a vision from a 15-year-old Jewish boy who died for 15 minutes. How many of you have heard this before? This is very exciting and this is the, the buzz among the end time community. If you're into end times, you'll definitely uh, be into this dream. Uh, this Jewish boy, his name is Natan, we'll say Nathan in English, we'll anglicize it. Uh, Nathan died for 15 minutes on the first day of Sukkot 2015, which was the day we preached about the fourth blood moon. And that blood moon is a sign to the Jews. The blood moons are assigned to the Jews. The eclipse, solar eclipses on God's holy days are assigned to the Gentiles, most of us. So it doesn't surprise me at all that on that fourth blood moon, and we're in that season, we're in this, this time right now where the four blood moons announce something major for Israel, uh, he died and saw something. Um, Nathan had no religious upbringing. In fact, his parents are against his vision and threaten the synagogue to sue it for posting his vision on YouTube. Nathan was interviewed by an Orthodox rabbi named Eliezer Hagadol, who ignored his parents' threats and uh, put it up on YouTube. So it's very hard to follow this interview because it's long and it's all in Hebrew. So I'm going to read it to you in English, summarize it for you, but before I do that, I just want to show like a one minute clip so that you at least see it's a real Orthodox Jewish rabbi. He's very strict with this boy. This is a real secular boy. He knows nothing about the Bible. Take a look at a minute of the interview. When the soul leaves the body, it can receive a huge amount of information that would take years for a person here in this world to learn. One can understand within a matter of minutes, everything. So he has a lot to tell. It's hard for him to tell it. He doesn't know the exact words to describe what he experienced. Hey, can you just fast forward so we can hear his voice a little bit? Things that do not relate to this world. He saw planet Earth from above. He kept le going up, leaving his body. I don't know how to explain it suddenly. Out of nowhere, I entered a sort of tunnel, really huge. At the end of the tunnel, a very small light. I was in a tunnel. I don't know how to explain it. There were circles, more circles. Inside, lots and lots of souls. I started walking. The lights got bigger and bigger. Finally, you reach that light. Obviously, whenever ever somebody says that they have had a vision or gone to heaven, you've got to test it with the Word of God. That's always the standard. But I do believe that this is a genuine vision because the things that Nathan said 
are basically he's preached my sermon that I've been preaching about end times for 15 years through a lot of study he just got in a few minutes and there's no way that he could have gotten it without the study and not only that he's not from a religious family so he wouldn't have even overheard it in a sermon he doesn't attend the synagogue now he does so something supernatural happened to him. Some of the ways that he describes things sounds to me like a Jewish way of describing. It doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it's wrong, but it wouldn't agree with the way that we would say it. But I think if God was reaching out to somebody, like a Buddhist, he'd speak to a Buddhist in a Buddhist language. If he speaks to a Jew, he'd reach out to a Jew in Jewish language. So you've got to give it a little bit of leeway that God is quite bigger than the Christian box that we put him in. Uh, the rabbi then asked, this is the one they want to know. Could you know who the Mashiach was? And the Mashiach is the original word for Christ. They want to know who is the Christ, who is the Messiah. Nathan, I couldn't know. I could only know what his traits were. And I think God is smart to do that. If God had revealed that it's Yeshua, Jesus, immediately the rabbis would have said, forget it. We're not YouTubing this end of interview so God is very wise don't think you know he's in your box he knows what he's doing he said I could only know what his traits were now listen to his traits what he needs to be in order to be Mashiach number one he is here he must be here it can't be that Mashiach is someone who is dead that can't be number two it has to be someone who is here who people know but when he come he becomes Mashiach everybody will be surprised a huge surprise and people will say ah that's the Messiah it will be like wow that's the Mashiach like that when will it happen number three according to what I understood the Geula which is the redemption and the revelation of Mashiach is going to happen very soon. The rabbi is not very impressed with this, as you are not. Very soon means a lot of things. Rabbi says, now tell me, when you were there, there was no concept of time. How can you estimate the concept of time? What is imminent? Is it 20 years, two years, a month? Nathan, imminent is right away, like in the coming months, like I can tell you that the redemption is very close to here. I understood according to what I understood there. I am certain that I know it. When I was up there, I understood what was going to happen in the world. And according to what I understood, very bad things are going to happen. But it depends on who. Rabbi, is there a way to avert it? There is that possibility if we all repent that it won't happen. For the full video on the commentary on Nathan's vision, see the links below for full video. We have number of videos. After Nathan's vision came another rabbi, Rabbi Alon Onova. Later Rabbi Alon Onova in 2016 combine all the prophecies together. Rabbi Alon stated when you see Russia crossing the sea strait between Turkey and Ukraine, the most extensive descriptions of Gog, and Magog in the Hebrew Bible appear in Ezekiel 38 to 39. Let us hear from the rabbi and how he connects the prophetic dots together. Rabbi affirms to have the exact date of the Messiah's coming and asks people to prepare. Another addresses the common misunderstanding that many have about the coming of the Messiah, although years ago this seemed a long way off. Now we are closer. The rabbi used the Hebrew spelling to explain his point of view. And according to him, this concept is the basis of the mathematical calculation he presented in year zero, Adam was born. David was born in the Hebrew year 2854. Since King David is the middle position between Adam and the Messiah, doubling the year of his birth should reveal the coming of the Messiah. Good evening everybody. My name is Alona Nava, And today we're going to talk about the most important topic that we need to know and concentrate about is the fact that Mashiach is coming any second. And I know many people say, ah, oh, we've been hearing about it for so many years. Why should it come now? 
Thousands of years we've been hearing that Mashiach is coming, Mashiach is coming. Now he's going to come? Why? Why should he come now? So tonight, I'm going to try to cover a few topics. The first topic is sources that prove to us that Mashiach is, has to come now. Now, I, in the last half a year, I did a very, very long research, and I got to about 300 pages of sources from Torah, from Tanakh, from the Zohar, from Midrashim, from the Gemarot, from Mekubalim, 300 pages of sources that all shows that the Geula has to come now. I'm not going to share with you all these 300 pages. I'm only going to share a few of them because it's not so important. But the most important thing to understand is that the Geula is happening now. The Geula, I mean the redemption, the coming of Mashiach. Once we understand that we're right in the doorstep of the Geula, that Mashiach is coming any minute, then the next step is how am I getting ready? Because nobody wants to be caught that Mashiach came and you're one minute too late. So this is the most important thing. For 5,000 years, we've been hearing constantly that Mashiach is coming. Since the destruction of the second temple, we've already been hearing that Mashiach has to come. And then, you know, the, the biggest question that everybody's asking is, yeah, like I said before, we heard about it so, so many times, why does it have to come now? The reality is that we've been waiting for Mashiach not only 2,000 years from the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. From the day the world was created, we already were talking about the coming of Mashiach. Right when the world was created, open Sefer Bereshit, and it says, Veruach Elokim merachefet al pnei amayim. Rashi says, this is talking about Ruchosh el Mashiach, the spirit of Mashiach. And there's many places in the Torah that it's already hinting about the time of Mashiach. Now, a lot of people say, okay, how do we know when Mashiach is coming? Because if we would have a date, maybe it would be easier to prepare. The truth is that the sages that knew when the Geula is coming and the Mekubalim, and the prophets, and anyone who knew when the, the redemption is happening, they chose not to tell us when it's happening. And there's a reason for that. The first time that we see that somebody knew when the Geula is going to come is with our father Yaakov. And when he came to rebuke the, the tribes, if you remember, he came to rebuke the tribes, and it says, He wanted to tell them the date when Mashiach is coming. And then it says, And right on this moment, he forgot. Now, come on. <laughs> Yaakov Avinu forgot. The greatest of the three fathers, he forgot. This is not the type of person that forgets. He just made a quick calculation. What's going to happen if I tell them when Mashiach is coming? So he came to two conclusions. The first one will be, that they will fall into despair right on the spot. Can you imagine? He's telling them Mashiach is coming in 4,000 years. Right on the spot, they're going to fall into despair and say, we give up. We don't want to wait so long. And the second conclusion he came to is that he said, if I'm going to tell them the Geulah is coming in 4,000 years, you know what they're going to tell me? Huh, okay, so let's go and party. And in 3,999 years, we'll do Tshuva right when it comes. So he decided not to tell them. Not that he forgot, he just decided, it's okay, I'm not going to tell them. And there are many occasions that there are sages or prophets that knew exactly when the Geulah is coming, and for the same reason they decided not to say it. And we know, the Gemara teaches us, that the Geulah can come in two times. The first time that it can come, Beta, and it's time. There's a date decided, and this is the day it's going to come. And then there's another option, that it's going to come, what's called Ve'achishena. I'll bring it faster. Which means that if we, as the Jews, get our act together, we can bring the Geulah faster. These are the two options where it can come. 
There's also two options that the Geulah is going to come, what's, going to, what's called Bechesed Vebarachamim. It's going to come in a very merciful way. And Chas Veshalom, it can also come, I don't, know, I don't want to even say how it's going to come. In the book of Daniel, it says that if the generation has the merits, im zachu, then Mashiach is going to come what's called on Ananei Shmaya, on clouds of glory. We're going to be taken on clouds, first class, from here to Eretz Israel. The Gaon Chida says, sorry, the Ben Ishchai says, this is kepshuto meaning that they're really going to be crowds. But for this to happen, to go first class on the clouds, the entire generation has to have this merit. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 17. 16, for the Messiah himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Messiah shall rise first. 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Messiah in the air, and so shall we be taken with the Messiah. This is only imzachu. If we have enough merits, that's how the redemption is going to come. This is what it says in the book of Daniel. But in the book of Zechariah, it says, Im lo zachu. If we don't have the merit, Mashiach is going to come poor, ani al chamor, poor and riding on a donkey. So these are the two options how the Geula can come. A, it can come in its time, Be'ito, or it can come Vachishena, fast. Now Rabbi describes the two options, one, in his time. When the time is right or he comes fast, then Rabbi goes on explained that it all depend on us. Listen again. So these are the two options how the Geula can come. A, it can come in its time, Be'ito, or it can come Vachishena, fast. These two options has been described by Yeshua himself. Mark 13, 30 to 2, 37, the day and hour are known. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away, he leaves his house, and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back to you, heather in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn, if he comes suddenly. Do not let him find you sleeping, what I say to you. I say to everyone, watch. 2. Yeshua said, If the Jews put their acts together, they will welcome the coming of the Messiah fast. Luke 13. 35 Look, God is abandoning your house to you. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Hashem. And it can come good and it can come not good. This is all depending on us. I want to do in a very short way, touch a few of the sources, how we really know that Mashiach has to come right now. Now, first of all, we know that the world was created for 7,000 years. It says in the book of Yeshaya, chapter 2, verse 11, that the world was created for, for 7,000 years. Now, if we, first of all, it says in the Pasuk, Shit al have alma vechad charuv. 6,000 years the world is going to be in one state, and then 1,000 years is going to be in a state of destruction. This is what it means. This is going to compare to the six days of creation. The first 6,000 years go to the six days of creation, and the last millennium, the last 1,000 years, corresponds to the day of Shabbat. This is what it says in the book of, of Yeshaya. So we know that the world is created for 7,000 years, and we're right now in the year 5,776. Now, it says in the book of Tilim. In Perek Tzadik, in the chapter, chapter 90, verse 4, Ke'elef shanim be'enecha ke'yom etmol. That 1,000 years of us is one day for the Kadosh Baruch Hu. So if this is the case, so our 7,000 years is seven days for the Kadosh Baruch Hu. 
Now, there's a place in the Zohar, there's two places in the Zohar, in Parashat Vayikra and Parashat Vayetchanan, that it says that when it's time for, for the Kadosh Baruch Hu, for Hashem, to pray Mincha of Erev Shabbat, that's the time when the Geula is ready to happen. So we all, all we need to do is calculate when is time for Mincha. Very simple, in Erev Shabbat. So if we go for the fact that every thousand years of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, of us is one day of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, so the first 5,000 years correspond to the first five days. Now we know that the day in our calendar starts at night. It doesn't start in the day. That's how we start the night. Now the sun goes down. That's when we start counting the day. So for the first 5,000 years, that corresponds from day Sunday till Thursday, till Thursday evening when the sun goes down. So now we have to calculate from the sundown till the time for Mincha. Now how do we calculate that? From Tzeta Kochavim, when the sun goes down, till the morning, till Alot HaShachar, is 12 hours. Exactly half a day. And we know that Mincha Gedola is six and a half hours from Alot HaShachar. So we have to calculate 18 and a half hours. You do a very simple calculation. You take 1,000, which corresponds to the 1,000 years, divide that into 24, 24 hours a day, times that 18 and a half hours from sundown to the time of Mincha Gedola, and that's going to give us the exact time when it's time for Mincha, on Erev Shabbat. Now don't pull out your calculations, your calculators. 1,000 divided in 24 times 18 and a half, 770. That's the number. Now take the 5,000 plus 770, so you get 5,770. 5, Taf, Shin, Ein. This was six years ago. This is the time, the year, that it's time for Gadosh Baruch to put on his Erev Shabbat clothes, put the chunt on the blech, and go to pray Mincha. Now in our generation, it doesn't work like that. You pray Mincha a minute before Shabbat, but the right way to pray Mincha Gedola in Erev Shabbat, that's the time. Midday, six and a half hours from Alot HaShachar. Which means if we go by the source in the Zohar that the Geula can ha start happening when it's time for Mincha Gedola, it's Tav Shin Ein, 5,770. That happened six years ago, which means just six years ago was the time that the Geula can start happening. Now you have to understand that the redemption, the Geula, is not a one second thing. It's a very long process. The Zohar says that it's a 72-year process. The Zohar says in Parashat Vaera that the process is going to be 72 years. 72 years corresponding to the name of Hashem, of the name what's called Ein Bet. Hashem has four names that if you take the name Yud Kei Vav Kei and you break it to the Gimatria, but with what's called Milui Otiyot, so there are four types of name. One of the names is, is, is the name called Ein Bet, 72. This goes 70 years of what's called Hevlei Mashiach, and then two years of the time of Biat Mashiach corresponding to the 70 screams, so to say, that a woman does when she's in labor. That's why it's called Hevlei Mashiach, like a woman that's going into labor. The time of the redemption is like a process of labor. And the Zohar says that it's going to take 72 years. And the Zohar did a very easy calculation. The Zohar says in Parashat Vayera, in the page 58, that the Geula, the time of the, the Hevlei Mashiach is going to start, that the Malchut, the Shechina, is going to put its head between the Netzach and the Hod. That's what it says. Now we know that we have ten Sfirot, Esser Sfirot. If you count the Sfirot from the top, from Keter all the way down, the Netzach and, and Hod is the seventh one. Take 1,000 years, we're constantly counting everything with 1,000 years. If you calculate it by the years that the Malchut, that the Shekhinah is putting its head between its knees, that's how it says in the Zohar, like a person that cries, puts his head in between the knees. But if you go by the calculations of the Sfirot, the Netzach and the Hod, 
it's 700. So if you count 700 from the thousand years, we come to the year Tafshin. Tafshin is 1939. 1939 was when the Holocaust started. And the Zohar says that in Tafshin, we'll start Chavlei Mashiach. The suffering will start. And sure enough, in 1939, the suffering started. So the process of the Geulah is a very long process. It's 72 years of what's called Chevlei Mashiach, of suffering. Then, after the 72 years, we're ready to start the coming of Mashiach. It's a process. Now, there's a very interesting prophecy by a prophet called Zrubavel. He's not such a known prophet. His name is Zrubavel ben Shaltiel. He's the great-grandson of the, of the king Yehoiachin who is a direct descendant of King David. There's a book, what's called Sefer Zrubavel, the book of Zrubavel. He's mentioned in four books, in Haggai, in Ezra, in Divrei Ayamim, and Zechariah. He's mentioned four times. In his book, there's a prophecy that he says that for 40 years, we're going to have to have possession of Yerushalayim. After the 40 years that we have possession of Yerushalayim, there's going to be five years of a period of Mashiach ben Yosef, and then the birth of Mashiach ben David is going to start. Now, in history, when did we start having possession of Yerushalayim? After the Six-Day War in 1967. For 2,000 years, we didn't know, nobody had possession, not on Israel or Yerushalayim. In 1967, we started having possession of Yerushalayim. So take 40 years that he's talking about. From 1967, that's 2007. Add the five years that he's talking about the period of Mashiach ben Yosef, that's 2012. So according to his prophecy, in 2012, it's time for the birth of Mashiach ben David. 2012 is the year Tafshin Ein Bet. There are numerous places in the Torah, and all the Mekubalim calculated that the Geulah has to come at Tafshin Ein Bet. I didn't mean necessarily that Mashiach is coming at Tafshin Ein Bet. Tafshin Ein Bet is 2012, that the Geulah is going to start. And this is the time that the, this prophecy from Zerubbabel, after the 40 years and the 5 years, that's the time when Mashiach ben Yosef is going to die, and then we're starting the period when Mashiach ben David is, is, is going to be born. Now, there are many different prophecies that show us how we're so close. Now, there's an amazing prophecy by the Gaon from Vilna. And he says that when the Russians are going to cross what's called Metzareya Bosorov, the, the Sea Strait. Sea Strait is when two uh, continents are very close and there's a very th narrow uh, path. The Gon from Vilna said that when the Russians are going to cross the Meitzare of the Bosorov, you should put your Shabbos clothes on because Mashiach is coming. And you know when that happened? It happened half a year ago that the entire Russian navy crossed this sea split of the next, between Turkey and I think it's Ukraine. There's that same exact prophecy by another two tzaddikim. Three tzaddikim said the exact same prophecy. The Gaon from Vilna, Rabbi Israel from Bruzhin, and the holy Jew from Pischa, Psicha. They all said the same thing, that when the Russian army with their vessels and their ships are crossing these sea splits, that says the exact same thing, that when the Russians are going to start a, a confrontation with the, with the, Turkey, uh, with the Turks, and they're going to cross the, the, the same place, then you can start getting ready because the Gula is about to come. Now For the full video on Alon Arnawa, see the link below.